The U.S. Air Force is committing over $100 billion to acquire 100 B-21 Raider stealth bombers. A single program so large, it will absorb nearly 12% of the entire Department of Defense acquisition budget for the next decade. The Congressional Budget Office projects that America's nuclear and long-range strike modernization, led by the U.S. Air Force B-21 Raider, will cost $663 billion between 2025 and 2034. And here's the part most people miss. Three quarters of the B-21's cost is driven by conventional warfighting, not nuclear deterrence. This aircraft isn't being built for Armageddon. It's being built for day one penetration of Chinese and Russian air defenses. Strategic bombers exist to stop wars before they begin, and when deterrence fails, to end them fast. But today, the United States has a brutal problem. Out of the entire U.S. bomber fleet, only about 10% can survive inside modern anti-access area denial environments. And that capability rests almost entirely on the B-2 Spirit, a bomber so rare that only 21 were ever built, with fewer than 20 combat-coded aircraft available, each costing over $2 billion per jet and requiring climate-controlled hangars just to stay stealthy. Against China's Indo-Pacific IADs, layered with HQ-9B and HQ-22 surface-to-air missiles, over-the-horizon radars, space-based sensors, and sensor fusion kill chains, that is not a fleet, it's a liability. The B-21 Raider is the world's first sixth-generation combat aircraft, designed with a radar cross-section smaller than the B-2, optimized across multiple radar bands, built with buried engines, seamless surfaces, and next-generation materials intended to defeat both Chinese and Russian integrated air defense systems before they ever get a firing solution, and at roughly one-third the cost of a B-2, around $700 million per aircraft. But here's the real story. The headline isn't that the U.S. Air Force is ordering 100 B-21s, it's that senior commanders and defense analysts are warning 100 may not be enough, that 200 or more may be required to deter global conflict, and that a fleet capped at 100 aircraft risks a catastrophic vulnerability known as One Bad Night, a scenario where a concentrated bomber force is crippled before it ever leaves the ground. So the real question isn't why America is buying the B-21 Raider, it's why the United States waited this long, and whether even 100 stealth bombers can close the gap that's already formed. The bomber problem America can't ignore. On paper, the US Air Force bomber fleet looks formidable. In reality, it is sharply constrained in a peer conflict. The fleet consists of three aircraft, the B-52 Stratofortress, the B-1B Lancer, and the B-2 Spirit. Each reflects the era it was built for, and only one was designed to survive inside modern air defenses. The B-52 is visible, slow, and entirely dependent on launching weapons from outside defended airspace. The B-1 is fast and flexible, but stripped of nuclear capability and fundamentally non-survivable in high-threat environments. That leaves the B-2 Spirit, the only penetrating bomber in the inventory, and there are fewer than 20 combat-coded aircraft available. Against the scale of modern warfare, that is not depth, it is fragility. And the threat environment has changed completely. Over the last two decades, China and Russia rebuilt air defense from the ground up. Cold War systems were linear. Modern integrated air defense systems are layered, mobile, networked, and fused across domains. Long-range radars cue tracking radars. Tracking radars hand off to fire control systems. Space-based sensors confirm trajectories. Mobile launchers relocate before counter-strikes arrive. Fighters, SAM batteries, electronic warfare units, and command centers operate as a single adaptive organism. Russia's network is anchored by systems like the S-400 and emerging S-500, supported by radar families such as Nebo-M and Podlet, specifically designed to search for low observable targets across multiple frequencies. China expanded this model at scale. In the Indo-Pacific, Beijing has constructed a continent-spanning A2-AD umbrella using HQ-9B and HQ-22 surface-to-air missiles, long-range mainland radars, airborne early warning aircraft, and an expanding ISR satellite constellation. The objective isn't simply to shoot aircraft down, it's to deny access, to raise the cost of entry so high that air power hesitates before the first sortie. This evolution was incremental but relentless. In the 1990s, stealth defeated fragmented defenses. In the 2000s, defenses became digital. In the 2010s, they became networked. 
Today, they are sensor-fused. Detection no longer depends on one radar seeing one aircraft. It depends on dozens of sensors building a shared picture. That shift broke the old bomber model. By the late 1990s, the Air Force believed its bomber fleet could last into the late 2030s. That assumption collapsed. As maintenance costs surged, manpower thinned, and air defenses advanced faster than expected. The B-2 proved stealth worked, but it also exposed the danger of exclusivity. Each aircraft cost over $2 billion. Each required climate-controlled infrastructure. Each sortie demanded massive preparation. Losses were unacceptable because replacement was impossible. Attempts to delay the problem failed. The next generation bomber collapsed under cost and complexity. In 2009, it was canceled outright, forcing a reset. When the program re-emerged as the long-range strike bomber, the philosophy changed. Affordability became a rule. Digital design became foundational. Maintainability mattered as much as stealth. The aircraft would be survivable and scalable. It would be designed to operate inside the very air defense systems China and Russia had spent decades constructing. That aircraft became the B-21 Raider. How the B-21 was built for the IADS era. The B-21 Raider is the world's first sixth generation combat aircraft, engineered to defeat not just radar, but the entire kill chain. Its flying wing design eliminates vertical surfaces that generate radar spikes. Engine intakes are buried deep inside the airframe, shielding fan blades that normally act as radar mirrors. Seams, edges, and cockpit surfaces are engineered to minimize returns across multiple frequency bands, critical in an era where air defenses search everywhere at once. But stealth alone doesn't solve the problem. The B-21 is built as a networked system, carrying one of the most advanced ISR and sensor suites ever fielded. It can detect, classify, strike, and assess damage independently while sharing real-time data with fighters, drones, ships, and satellites. In future operations, it can act as a penetrating command node, coordinating unmanned systems deep inside contested airspace. Just as important, the B-21 is designed to be used at scale. Its stealth coatings are durable. It does not require climate-controlled hangars. It can disperse, deploy forward, and generate sorties rapidly. At roughly $700 million per aircraft, about one-third the cost of a B-2, it makes mass survivability possible. This wasn't a technological flex, it was a structural correction. How the B-21 survives where others fail The B-21 survives because it doesn't confront air defenses directly. It dismantles their logic. Modern IADs rely on layers. Long-range early warning radars, mid-range tracking radars, fire control radars, infrared sensors, and passive receivers. Every layer feeds the next. If one sensor gets a clean detection, the entire network reacts. The B-21 Raider survives because it doesn't fight air defenses head-on. It breaks how they work. Modern air defenses don't rely on a single radar anymore. China and Russia use layered systems where long-range early warning radars scan huge areas, mid-range tracking radars refine the picture, fire control radars guide missiles, Infrared sensors watch for heat, and passive receivers listen for emissions. Every layer feeds the next. If one sensor sees you, the whole network wakes up. The B-21 is designed so no layer gets a clean look. At long range, its shape and materials scatter radar energy instead of reflecting it back, especially from the low-frequency radars meant to spot stealth aircraft early. Those radars may know something is out there, but not where it is how fast it's moving, or what it is. And without precision, the kill chain stalls before it starts. As the aircraft moves closer, higher frequency search and tracking radars face a different problem. The B-21's surfaces, edges, and seams are engineered to deny sharp radar returns. Its engine fans, normally radar beacons, are buried deep inside the airframe. What comes back to the radar looks less like an aircraft and more like background noise. Infrared sensors don't solve it either. The Raider's engines are masked and cooled, spreading heat across the airframe instead of dumping it into a bright exhaust plume. To an IR sensor, it blends into the atmosphere instead of standing out against it. Passive detection systems are also starved. The B-21 doesn't need to broadcast to fight. Its sensors work quietly, and its data comes from fused inputs rather than constant emissions. No emissions means nothing to triangulate. Even if a defense system suspects something is there, it still faces the final problem, time. 
The B-21 doesn't sprint through contested airspace. It operates inside it, adjusting routes, timing, and altitude as the threat picture changes. It can see the defenses reacting and move before they can lock, cue, or fire. And survivability doesn't end in the air. The B-21 stealth coatings are built to survive routine operations, not climate-controlled hangars. That means it can disperse, relocate, and stay unpredictable, denying adversaries the ability to wipe out the fleet in a single strike. This is why analysts warn that 100 B-21s may not be enough. Survivability scales with numbers. More aircraft mean more bases, more routes, more targets to defend against, and fewer chances for a one bad night to change the war. The B-21 doesn't promise invincibility. It promises something far more dangerous to adversaries. Access, uncertainty, and endurance. And that's why the Raider isn't just replacing bombers. It's rewriting the rules they were designed to survive under. If this video changed how you understand the US Air Force and the B-21 Raider, subscribe now, because this channel breaks down America's air power before the rest of the world reacts to it. Share this with someone who still thinks air defenses can stop the US. And answer this in the comments. Is 100 B-21s enough to deter China and Russia? Or is the Air Force already underbuying?